Hey guys, it's me again. I am now 210 days sober. That's seven months. Seven, approximately. And now I'm going to talk with you how I got here and how I'm staying here. First off, the most important thing is don't make excuses. That's how we, that's the root of all relapse. It is the mother of all relapses. You see, some of you will say, you know, Oh, my boyfriend or my girlfriend broke up with me. I had a bad day at work. I just lost my job. I, you know, had a bad dream about, you know, the time I was beat up, the time I was raped, or the time I saw a bunch of people get blown up in Iraq or Afghanistan. Poor little me. Boo hoo 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 hoo. Well, I'm not saying that there's not legitimate problems like anxiety, PTSD, or survivor's guilt. Those things are very real. They are also, not only are they real, they are very convenient excuses. And uh, they will, and if you allow, your, allow them to allow yourself to go that route, you will relapse. It's just that simple. Once you get sober, there is no excuse to relapse. You are responsible for your own sobriety. No one else. And, um, for example, I know a girl. She is 20 years old. She was just diagnosed with HIV after she got sober. Now, there are a whole bunch of things that she could do. She could just say, poor little me, I have HIV. I, I got relapse. No, she didn't do that. And guess what? In pretty much every state that allows medical marijuana, or every one I've seen so far, you can get it. You can get medical cannabis for um, HIV in pretty much all of them. And she's not doing that. She is completely 100% sober. And no, she does not smoke or do vape like I do. Or vape like I do. So I ask you, What's your excuse for not staying sober? You know, find an excuse to stay sober. And uh, I guess one of my excuses is to stay sober is that girl told me several times that if I drink, she will literally kick my ass. And um, so that always weighs in the back of my mind whenever I look at beer. And I always look at it, and when I pass in the store, and I go, Fuck you. I'm stronger than you. And, um, but you see, my journey to alcoholism was not, was probably not like yours. I have autism and ADHD. I didn't start really drinking at all, really. I did never really drank until, you know, my mid-twenties or thereabouts. And it gradually snuck up on me. Pretty soon, I like soon. It eventually got to the point where I was going on, you know, four or five day long binges where I would just go to the store, buy a bunch of beer, and drink it until I pa until I passed out and was basically drank myself into oblivion, you know. And um, you know, like that girl girl who got sober and is staying sober. You know, she refuses to adopt the victim mentality. She is the most one, one of the most Sammy, Sammy Sunshine positive and kindest spirits I've ever met. She has a heart of gold. And, um, you see, the thing is, is it's just, you know, when I, when you want to drink or do, or shoot up, smoke, snort, whatever you're, you were addicted to, keep that, that young lady in your mind because she's not making excuses. So I'd like to know what yours is, honestly. <laughs> and um, she has a lot of trauma in her past. Believe, you, believe me, she has had truly horrific things happen to her and she's still staying sober. Anyhow, um, see, the thing is, is when I, when I drank, I just did it to numb my problems and forget about them. And, uh, I, sure enough, it 
worked until the next day. I realized that I hadn't solved my problems and my problems were just standing there in the, standing by my bed, looking me in the face and going, good morning, alternative voice. How was your night? You tried to forget about me, didn't you? Well, I didn't forget about you. I'm back and your head hurts and you're throwing up. And um, I can't solve my problems by dissolving them in alcohol and giving myself headaches and vomiting fits. That's just not how this works. That's not the way life works. Sorry, your addiction is not going to help you. Also, um, alcohol is probably the worst drug out there. Um, only the only real competitors for that title are fentanyl and crocodile, you know? Because it's like, you know, alcohol is just truly destructive and I'm happy to be free of its chains. And I've been free 210 days. That's seven months today. And I've accomplished a lot since then. I had to wait, you know, 60 to 120 days before I saw any real benefits of my sobriety. And uh, quite frankly, I, for a while, I thought, was it worth it? Is my life w really getting worse or is it really going to get better or is it just going to stay the same as it was? But I just, I'm just sober now, you know? Some people would call me a dry drunk, but I don't believe in dry drunks. Um, the thing is, is that you have to acknowledge that things often have to get worse before they get better. At least that's what Jordan Peterson says. It's just that simple. I'm not saying it always works like that, but it often does. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Be good, y'all. Peace.